Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Tavern. I am your innkeeper, Vase Odin, and this is part two of the Battlesmith Artificer Guide. So level six, you get two expertise, which allows you to double your proficiency bonus when making a skill check that requires a tool. Your thief's tools now allows you to open locks and such, almost as good as a rogue or bard. That's really awesome. You also get a new set of available infusions, which you can watch the video here for the infusions that you get at level six. And you can know up to six different infusions and can infuse a total of three items. Even though you only get one thing at this level, it's a game changer. Flash of Genius is such a cool ability. It lets you use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw that you or an ally take within 30 feet. Not only does this greatly increase you or your ally's ability to succeed saving throws, but you can use it to boost your initiative before a fight. You can use this tactically to your party's advantage so you can help determine who in your party gets to go first. That's a huge advantage to any adventuring group. That alone makes this ability totally worth it. But the fact that you can also use it for a saving throw, it just it's completely mind-blowing that they gave this ability at such a low level. That's awesome. Level 8. This brings another ability score improvement. Again, unless you're multi-classing, go with intelligence. Having a 20 gets you 5 uses of your Flash of Genius. Add a plus 5 bonus. Gives you a plus 5 to hit and damage with your magic weapons and you get to prepare more spells. You also get to maximize your spell attack and save DC with those spells, as well as a number of times that you get to use next level's ability, Arcane Jolt. If your intelligence is already 20, I'd probably go with Constitution Increase, but it depends on your build. If you're playing with feats, there's some great options for Battlesmith. I'd go with Sharpshooter if you're going to be going uh, with a crossbow type build. Great Weapon Master if you're going to be on the front lines and fighting with a great weapon. Or Portal Arm Master or Sentinel if you're going to be a little bit more of a control front line type person. I'd probably skip Alert, even though it's a great feat in general. Mostly because you already have Flash of Genius for an initiative bonus. And your Steel Defender can help block for you in case you're surprised. Your Steel Defender cannot be surprised. So it's a, it's a great feat, don't get me wrong. And if you want to take it, Definitely, it's not going to hurt your character to do so. But since you're already getting similar bonuses that Alert provides, and that would just improve those bonuses, I would say you have better options in terms of feats or ability score increases. But your choice. Lucky, that's a good choice no matter what. So I'd say Lucky, you cannot go wrong with getting that feat. If you're going for more magical battlefield control or support, Warcaster is another great option. This can boost your ability to maintain those uh, concentrations on those things that you're going to be using to control the battlefield, and especially if you're going to be taking damage in combat. So Warcaster is always a good choice for any spellcaster. Again, even though you're a halfcaster, a lot of your spells are going to be extremely helpful to the party, so it definitely would not be a bad idea to take that, that feat. Level 9 is another big level for Battlesmith. You get the Arcane Jolt ability, which can synergize really nicely whether you're building for support or frontline combatant. When you hit an enemy with a magic weapon, or if your steel defender hits an enemy, you can deal extra damage, kind of like a smite. You can decide to deal the extra damage after you hit, so it doesn't waste if you miss the attack. And it also really works nicely if you're trying to maximize your critical hits, kind of like smiting. Alternatively, you can choose to heal one creature within 40 feet of the target. That makes this ability really versatile, and useful in many ways. Like I've been saying, the Battlesmith can be many things. You can be frontline, or if you want to be like a backup healer and support, this is a great way to be an additional backup healer uh, and heal party members from afar. The great thing about this ability is that you can still hang back from the party and use a magical range weapon, like a crossbow or something, shoot something and still heal from a range towards your party. Uh, and you can heal the melee combatants without having to jump into the melee. You can also send your Steel Defender in and have them attack and heal your frontline fighters. There's a lot of tech tactical uses for this, for the healing portion, 
in addition to the damaging portion. It's such a really good ability. So at level 10, you now have four attunement slots. That's awesome. You also get magic item adapt, which grants you the ability to reduce the time and lower the cost of crafting common and uncommon magic items. That's decent. You get two more infusions that you can know and you can infuse an additional item. Even better, you get a ton of new infusions to pick from. Check the video here. And we're going to be discussing those infusions in detail in those videos. So level 11 is the third tier of play. At this level, most characters get certain spells or abilities that greatly increase their capabilities. The same happens at level 5, which is tier 2. As an artificer, your mega ability at this level is the ability to store spell in a weapon or an item that can be a spellcasting focus. You basically can store any artificer spell that you can cast and that takes an action to cast. Any character can then cast a spell using an action and you get a total number of uses equal to your intelligence or to twice your intelligence modifier. That is so phenomenal. So if you wanted to have someone use blur, you can use casting on the wizard spell casting focus. Now they have 10 uses of blur. That's freaking fantastic. Whoever uses the item has to concentrate on it if it's a concentration spell, but this basically allows a lot of great little uh, combos and uses for it. For example, if you cast Tiny Servant, you can have it cast and concentrate on spells like Web and Visibility, Heat Metal, even non-concentration spells. Your Tiny Servant can use them for you. Something like Cure Wounds, they can cast Long Strider on you, so you'll have extra movement. That's pretty awesome. Even better... Do you remember Warding Bond? Check the video here for on the Battlesmith spells. Warding Bond is a great spell that lets you take half damage. If someone takes a hit, they'll take half damage. You take half damage. So basically, they gain resistance to the damage they're being hit with. You take half that damage. They take half that damage. With this spell, you can give your tiny servant that spell casting focus. They can cast Warding Bond on you. And effectively, you have resistance to all damage and a plus one to AC. Sure, your Tiny Servant can die pretty quickly from that hit, but so what? You at least gained resistance for a hit and plus one to your AC and probably avoided getting hit several times because of it. Pretty awesome combination. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with this ability. It's such an amazing ability. The ability to have your spells cast by someone else 10 times is awesome. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, even if, if you, even if you don't use Tiny Servant, you can still have your non-spellcasting allies cast concentration spells and concentrate on spells that you would normally have been concentrating on. So it's just so awesome. Like you can have your fighter concentrate on web for you and then you can concentrate on something else. That's really, really cool. This ability is a, another game changer, just like the level seven ability. So the Artificer Battlesmith really starts to come onto his own at that higher levels. When it hits tier 3, it becomes a class that is just so versatile and has so many awesome abilities. I really am enjoying playing the Artificer Battlesmith. So that does it for part 2 of the optimization guide for the Artificer Battlesmith. Be sure to check out the spell videos. They're all going to be linked on the description. The infusion videos as well. And uh, all the videos in this series. We're also going to have a race video uh, for the optimization guide. Check them all out. They all kind of work together to give you the best options and the best ways to use your Battlesmith and build your Battlesmith. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, I'm your innkeeper, Vase Odin. This is the Twisted Tentacle Tavern. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and check out our Patreon. I'll talk to you guys soon.